Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. Uh, yesterday, I posted a video called Increased Brush Density of Watercolor Variant, and it was in response to a question on Painter Factory. Well, today we got more information from the questioner, Mr. Graphics Gaming. And uh, the brush that he was using is a, uh, the new simple water brush that's located in the digital watercolor category. And that's really good to know. It makes it a lot easier to answer the question. And the reason he didn't <laughs> post it before, it was 3.30 a.m. and he was both famished and tired. And I understand that. That's I get that way, too. And it's any time I get hungry and tired at the same time, it's it's a disaster. Okay, so let's go over here uh, to Painter. I'm going to reset the new simple water to make sure it's at its default setting. And I'll make it a little bit bigger. So when you paint with it, this is what you see. It's not getting the overlap. It, it, it can go, it can like bleed the color out or blend it out and it can put it in. Oh, I've got a comment. Uh, on my word on my blog. We'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so that's what it does currently. Now, the first thing I would do is I would go up to the dab profile and I would take it off the watercolor profile and put it on the one pixel edge profile. That in itself isn't going to do a lot, but <clears throat> in the larger scheme of things, it'll be better. The second thing I would do is I would come over to the method, which is digital wet, and to the subcategory, and I would change the subcategory from grainy digital wet abrasive to grainy digital wet buildup. Okay, so now when we use that, we're going to get the buildup of color. The problem now is that if I do a very light stroke, which I don't seem to be able to do, See how the color is kind of red? <laughs> and then as I increase the opacity, I get more of the brown sort of color. Well, and that usually is a function of well. I think that, um, I believe that anytime you use a, a digital wet or wet uh, brush, it's best to bring your bleed all the way down to zero, or at least less than resaturation. In this case, I'm going to take it to, to uh, bleed to zero. I'm going to undo the invert um, expression, bleed expression, and I'm going to change the expression to none. Okay, so that kind of helps with that color issue, but it's not quite done enough. So what I would do in that case is I would increase my saturation up to say 75 or uh, percent or so. Now let's see what we got. That's much better in, in my book anyway. Now another thing that you could do is you could take off the pressure setting of opacity. So let's just take it down to none. When you do that, though, you're going to get a very dark, dark color. So what you'd want to do then is reduce your opacity to somewhere between 7 and 15%. And let's just take it at the upper end, 15%. Now look, I'm getting really close to the color that it works with. And if I, since my resaturation is set to pressure, a lighter stroke will give me a little bit lighter color. So you can see there that the lightest stroke gave me a little bit different. Let's take that down to 50 and see if that would make it easier. Probably would. Okay, so light stroke. Light increase my uh pressure so i'm getting a little from a little bit lighter to a little bit darker so i have a little bit of opacity change there but we've got what we wanted which is the overlap we can play with the opacity making it less or more 
We can play with the resaturation, make it pressure or none. You could do it as none as well. We probably want to keep the uh, dab profile to that. And I think that's about all we would need to do with this particular brush. But now that I've done that, I want to ask you if you've tried going to the uh, the category of brushes called gel. Uh, they're not watercolor brushes, but they have a tendency to work similar to watercolor brushes. So if I go to gel camel hair, that's not the one I want to go to. Let's go to, well, we'll do gel captured. All right, if I do gel captured in gel, most of the gel brushes work with stroke attributes. And so a lot of them are set to multiply or gel. And that would give you that cross that you're, I mean, those overlaps that you're talking about. The advantage of this particular brush is that it has a painterly quality to it. Uh, you know, and I think you were looking for that. So gel captured is good. Gel coarse brush uh, uses gel. Gel and multiplier are essentially the same when it comes to composite methods. But see, this one gives you a nice kind of uh, bristly stroke. And again, we're getting the overlaps. So you may, you may really want to try mixing it up a bit. These brushes would work fine with uh, digital watercolor brushes that would work on the same layer with them and it would be uh, perfect. Let's see if we got another one here. <clears throat> well, these digital fractal jitter, those are kind of fun. You know, again, it's sort of a painterly look and, you know, you might want to try these out and see uh, if they work to your liking. Okay, so that should do it uh, for now. I hope this helped. Take care, and Happy New Year.